I have to say this again. Um, predictions are clutches cat girls. Mine is one four three. I can't wait for one four. You guys need to look at one four three in the chat because they're definitely going to plug their sponsorship. Okay. Just make sure that it started. Um, yep, started. We have fifty seconds till I start streaming. One four three is sure taking their grand old time getting this fucking lobby. Yeah. <sighs> They'll take nine years if you let them. Yeah, they're going to plug glide mouse pads. Man, that's taking forever. Oh, there we go. Oh, finally. I was wondering if my prediction was going to be right, simply because they were going to be late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they have 15 minutes before it's a disqualification, but right now they have a 9. 
It's like that, I'm pretty sure, so. Yeah. Wait for the last person before I start to introduce each team. Right now, we're just gonna chill out and wait. Actually, there's one person left, so I'm just already going to start diving into the team. Uh, we have 143 versus Cackerels today. I haven't casted Cackerels before, but I have casted 143. 143 is usually a pretty good team. They do have a couple of sponsorships in there. Um, 143 is, I believe, running sort of a new stack. Uh, we do see Rose and Stalic. Huh. Didn't know he was there. Um, Clutch, you might remember Snecky. Snecky used to be on TDG, but now it's part of 143. But, um, yep. 143, um, you know, they're a pretty sound team. I believe last year they did make a playoff run out. Believe if they won or not. Not very sure about that, but, uh, does look like they have retained two of their players, to my knowledge. And they have added Snecky. And I don't believe I've ever seen packs before, but I believe those two are the new players. Um,. Hopefully everybody has a good game. Moving over to the Cacro side, I haven't met any of those players before, but you can expect a good game from at least both teams. All right, uh, Gluck, have fun. And we are off. Cafe is the map today. Cacros are defending. Usually you see on Cafe a lot more of the, you know, intensely defensive sided. Especially since that upstairs take is a little bit kind of bottleneck where you have to funnel through at least one or two ways. Sometimes you do see the repels be abused, but past that, I can't really think of a um, you know something that is too overly pow overpowered on attacking. When you move down to downstairs, you can definitely take vertical control. But the ways to get into sight through those vert holes are very narrow. The only way that you can really bottle up is if you go through that... Um, or not bottle up, but get into the site while having vertical control completely, would be through that bathroom, or not bathroom, excuse me, freezer uh, take, but usually you do see a rotate hole put in that freezer just so, and someone playing in VIP, so that you can kind of like counterbalance them trying to hot drop, them trying to do anything out of the ordinary. Um, a Thatcher and a Sledge Boy. ban. Sledge is a little bit, yeah, not a little bit, that's a very weird ban. I don't think that that's probably going to be a one-time ban unless they're used to banning Sledge, but I don't think that was purposeful. But uh, Sledge ban coming out, a little bit of a question if the mark. Castle will come out. Oh yeah. Um, I wonder if they're going to ban Castle Mirror's ban. You know, that's pretty much a default ban on this map, especially since Mirror can hold upstairs so easily, and downstairs she's still pretty OP, especially on that middle floor if you're trying to go fireplace or um, any of the other players. These these bands are very odd, I would say. Um, and a smoke pan Whoa. coming out. Those are some weird bands from Cat Girl. I am a uh, little confused on why they would do that, but personally, I don't. I think that it might just be a little, you know, a little out of the ordinary. Trying to mix up some of their. Uh, player base, they might have been target banning. We do see on the attacking lineup, Yana, Flores, Zero, Thermite, Finca. You could definitely expect a, a six pick coming out, maybe onto the Zero. See if they can go a little bit more um, counter roam heavy, but you do see and on defensive side. Uh, they're bringing the castle as well. Oh, yeah, the castle's coming out. That's, you know, something that you can definitely expect. A mid Charge defense. complete. This is our first defense that we we're going to decide to go to first off. I do kind of like this decision because you do kind of get to, like, change up the entire game plan, but it does look like 143 was able to adapt to it and switch off of some of their uh, hard destruction, or not hard destruction, but more of the utility clear to see if they can get any more vertical pressure does look like they are starting to do kind of a default setup, make that rotate, foot holes across all of reading. I don't see any foot holes coming out onto the fireplace. Usually you do see that, but upstairs, if we look at it, it does look like they're trying to play it. more of a TSM hold where they castle off this, uh, they do castle off this whole side of the map. They do try and play maybe someone in Cocktail, and I do think that they're probably going to castle off this Freezer, because that's what TSM does. If you look at uh, how TSM plays it, 
that's what they do. It does look like they put the castle on the other side of the freezer. I don't know if he has any more castles left, but I do believe that White Window is still free. Very interested to see how they're going to try and play this. You know, a player playing deep freezer, especially with those 280s's, it's going to be pretty hard for them to try and overload anything. And uh, I'm very interested to see how they want to try and game plan for this. It does look like some of the players are upstairs. One is already walking in bow. It does turn around. It doesn't get punished for it. This is kind of, you know, very surprising. I, I'm a little surprised that Stalak didn't get punished for the, the aggressive push there, especially turning around with the beeper going off. I'm super surprised that the players didn't say, you know what, there's, they're already upstairs. We should at least try and, you know, make an execute towards it. It does look like one is downstairs trying to flank up red while one is in train. Uh, they do start to open up bolo repels onto that cocktail windows. Um, starting to pressure some of the players off of white stairs. C4 landing onto Rose from the rotate downstairs. What a beautiful C4 coming out right there. Does look like they're starting to put a little bit of pressure onto that uh, hallway. Pax does go down, does get revived from that Finca boost, but that's a lot of damage done and a down technically credit towards uh, Batman right there. See a little bit of drone work done right now. Doesn't seem like Alibi's going to play trying too aggressive, maybe open up the hatch, maybe. Does look like they're trying to play a little bit of feet holes all the way down onto the Alibi, but I don't think they understand the Alibi is in there. Playing a little bit aggressively right now in that corner. Does put herself in a little per bit of predicament. Does look like the Alibi is probably going to be able to catch this player off guard. I'm trying to switch to her. Doesn't look like much is happening right now. He does get hot pinged. A frag coming out from Stalak upstairs onto the Jaeger. Does look like they might have control upstairs now. Especially with the two frags coming out from Stalak. Very interesting to see if they're able to uh, identify that the player is in there right now. The drone does come out right now. We're good. Doesn't look place. like they've been able to That's find the right. alibi just yet. The player does drop. Oh, alibi plays a little bit passively. Drop. Does get the frag onto the buck, but the refrag immediately coming out onto the zero. It does look like they understand where the last person is. They do have a hot ping on them. It look like they decide to start firing. Does I don't know if this is going to be winnable for Nate, especially with the Pronal and the flank coming out from Stalag. A great round from 143 right there, you know, especially since they got, uh, they had Stalag, you know, enter in, especially, you know, LMG meta coming out. It's not like it's a very hard gun to not get kills with, you know, 100 round mag, very low recoil, 1.5 scope, and those overpowered adrenal surges, you know, not a, not a hard operator to use. They do go back to the reading fireplace. I feel like they might say, you know, as long as I don't look away or, you know, as long as we're able to shut down Stalak here, I feel like we might have, you know, a great game on our hand. But, um, or, or a great yeah, round on our hand. We have a good start to the round until uh, everyone top four just died. Oh, yeah. I, I think that if they maybe slow it down a little bit and, um, you know, especially since Batman got that down onto the buck. I don't know if he knew that he downed, especially with the wall bank, but uh, if Batman is able to, you know, not get fragged up on top white and uh, they don't get over pressured onto the top white. <laughs> that's, that's just questionable, but... <laughs> um, Stalic does get the 3k on the round and it does look like he had a huge impact here. Doesn't look like they're going to be playing a little bit too aggressively. It does look like they go back to that uh, TSM-esque hold. They do reinforce top red, and I wonder if they're going to maybe try and put a little bit more pressure on that first in cocktail so that they don't have it as free. Um, Stalic was able to get into the, the whole site for free. Doesn't look like many other people are going to be able to, uh, um, you know play this as weird. I don't think that the Alibi is going to be able to sit and train this time. It does look like they bring an Echo instead of the Alibi. You know, trying to switch out that operator and, uh, you know, create a little bit more diversity. Maybe slow them down with some Echo Cams as well. It does look like the Echo Cam is upstairs. Very interested to see how they want to try and take this, though. Um, it does look like they're starting to maybe relax a little bit. Let's see how they want to try to by one four three. Does look like they're able to identify that the echo team is there. It doesn't shoot the drone. It's truly unfortunate to see if they can maybe snag that echo team immediately, or if they're gonna try and uh, 
can take that cocktail back. Doesn't look like anybody's playing a cocktail too aggressively. Does look like they try to go back a little bit deeper into that freezer hold. Maybe if they believe that this freezer hold will be beneficial this time. Um, does look like they're trying to put a little bit of pressure onto that uh, that hole of hole side. Does uh, frag coming out onto Stalic, one of their top fraggers last game. Huge impact kill coming out from Nate. Um, especially since Nate was put in a clutch situation last game. I don't feel like, you know, this is a, a bad call. Pax getting down by the castle. Doesn't look like they're able to identify that he did go down. A play coming out swinging from Finally top white. Light. Pressure to second or first floor at all this round so far. Does look like they're able to just walk into white, see if they can get a frag immediately. Nate does get one kill upstairs, managing to down Rose. Pax is also in low health situation right now. Refrag coming out on to uh, Midwest. Does look like Kid Nate might be trying to play a little bit more passively, maybe right in the corner, see if they can get any picks. I don't think they've been able to isolate him out just yet. Does look like they're trying to maybe, you know, do a flank from. Uh, cocktail side does look like they double up. He does get the impact frag 2v2 on the board right now. Two players left in sight, and Echo still on the board. This is huge for cat girls right now, especially if, if they decide to say, all right, let's just turtle up with our Echo cans and uh, maybe have wet in a 1v1 situation. You know, I think this could be a huge round coming out from, you know, uh, cat girls, especially if they know how to play this. Does look like he has the audio on the player. Does lose the kill. Quad kill coming out from Tekken. Or, I don't know I don't know how to say his name right now. I'm just going to say Tech. A quad kill coming out. Does look like he goes for the ace. He gets the ace. A prone hole shot. I don't know why the Echo's getting aggressive in a situation like that at all. Or even if he doesn't have any Echo cams right now. I would still manage to try and say that and take it a little bit more slowly. Wait for that audio cue to come out before you just decide to go prone. Or maybe go to rotate through fireplace. Maybe even go try and play pillar, but the, I don't believe that those great situational awareness on on the echoes case just because the echoes, you know, going prone in the hallway, you're peeking a hole that is not peak or advantage, and you know zero. The tech just came out and gunned everybody that round. Beautiful ace onto the round, you know, managing to shut down all the players up top just to uh, fall down. I'm very surprised that the mute lost his ones right there, especially since he almost had Peeker's advantage, and it doesn't look like Tech was able to, you know, Bomb located by find him immediately, but Tech hit a beautiful shot that round, and that, that's just a, a superior gun skill coming out from 1 for 3 right now. That's what's winning them these rounds. I feel like if they maybe slow it down a little bit and say, alright, let's just fall back onto our little bit more reliable setup, does look like they just decide to go upstairs this time, maybe switch up a little bit, maybe not play Freezer a little bit too aggressively, if I were, if I were Cackrolls right now, what I would say is, there's a huge hole in our plan. Our player in Freezer isn't really doing or getting impact kills, and they keep overloading White. Maybe if you try and go play, you know, Cocktail a little bit more aggressively, I feel like that might be a little bit more beneficial, especially if you maybe put an Ella Shotgun, Top Red, or if you maybe put, you know, a player right behind the cocktail bow, they might be able to get an aggressive angle. Does look like they start to set up a default rotate. One player is going to continue to play deep freeze. I don't feel like this is going to be advantageous for most of the most of the game coming out from Kakros, just because I don't, I personally don't think that it's going to be a, a, a great way to win that. Does look like Finka is already in. Oh my god. No one's playing there. And, uh, and that castle is protecting that Finka. Yeah, a true, a true crackhead play, in my opinion, just because, you know, such a gr uh, aggressiveness coming out. It looks like he does manage to go onto the cocktail bow. I don't think that Castle's going to try and swing anytime soon. He does have a very good angle onto that new bow. See if anybody wants to try and swing out there, but I don't believe that he's going to be able to find one. Does find oh, one! A great kill coming out from Nate, able to find the Finca onto the ground. Unfortunately, the Finca does get the kill onto the player Pixel. Very interested to see how they try and recruit the from, or recuperate from this, especially since, you know, that pixel player being flushed out. I don't believe that they're going to be able to play pixel a little bit uh, aggressively at all. It does look like they do have the Jaeger try and go rotate through pixel. They do have a drone on him right now. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to immediately kill the drone. I'm very interested to see if he's going to win the situation right now, especially since they do have drone presence on him. They do manage to flush him out right now. They immediately take white. A double kill coming out from the Tachanka in Freezer. Techie gets the refrag onto the player top white. Does look like he gets another kill onto the player in deep freeze. 
Castle hitting a dirty shot onto the last player. Snecky in a 1v1 situation with Castle right now. Castle on low HP. Does look like he's going to try and quick peek around the bar. Falling back into Deep Freezer. Snecky does get a little bit of damage done to him right now. Pre-fire is coming out. It's him trying to stun over. Does not get full oh. stunned. The stun coming out. Fra uh, and the frag getting killed. Or frag being pulled out from Snecky right now. You know, a great shot onto the castle right there. Be barely being able to see pictures. That was a that was a, a fight coming out with pure intuition. A great round from 143 and a great round from... I, I feel like that would have been a great round from uh, Kakros if they maybe, you know, slowed it down and said, you know, we got that pick on Tachanka. We don't need to swing the player white. The player white is almost irrelevant just because... You can hold more of a passive angle into Deep Freezer if they want to try and hold a cross. You can hold a cross. Also, the castle has, as well, an angle to Deep White. I don't feel like the Chanta should have swung out right there, but, you know. That, that's the play that they decided to go for, and they did get punished for it, you know. Tech is having a hell of a game right now, especially... And Tech and Stalik are both having a hell of a game, just because, you know, Stalik is always the first one that managed to get these frags. And then Tech is just hitting these wild shots onto players that, you know, I feel like... Most of the time, if, if you have the gun skill, you shouldn't be winning that. Uh, if if the player opposing to you has gun skill and has a little bit of a, Ten seconds remaining. you know, intuition when it comes to winning, you know, understanding where people are going to peek, I feel like you shouldn't be able to win these gunfights. does look like Castle's going to be castling off that cocktail dog. does look like they're going to try and play cocktail a little bit more uh, aggressively. I'm very interested to see how they want to play this. They do continue to... They, I'm very surprised that they continue to try and catch off Cigar right here, just because I feel like if you're castling off Cigar, you should probably have the player trying to play deep red. I don't think that you should need to waste the castle onto this red Valk, just because you're saying, oh, it's going to split them up. They've cleared it every time. If you're identifying that, yeah, that castle is basically just cannon fodder and at this point. And that's what they're doing right now. And Stalic is already in. This dude's a gunner. He immediately oh. goes to frags Batman under. Getting all frags doesn't look like he's able to identify the player. Is Pillar matches with his shots, but Muwes gets the kill somehow. How do you still take damage in that fight? You should be able immediately be able to see a player who's not even looking at you. He's not even looking at you. That's just a, a bad gunfight across the board. I feel like if Stalic was able to identify the player was Pillar, which he should have, especially with the, the gunfire, but I understand why he was still looking up. Maybe if he was trying to create a late rotate. You know, I, I wouldn't expect a player to be down near brown pillar side. You know, a very interesting try and take. I'm very... Having own presence as well. I'm very interested to see, like, especially with Stalic off the board, how Tech is going to try and take this, because I feel like Tech is going to be the number one operator. Pax hasn't really had a great impact on the round yet so far, and it does look like um, Batman being taken out off the board immediately is their, you know, their entry frag. It's kind of... You know, a little detrimental. Nate is also the player playing behind Pixel. He look like he's played here most of the time. You know, I'm very interested to see if he's going to be able to get any shots. This angle that he that he uses right now, that he's using currently onto that new back, I feel like is a beautiful angle, and a lot more people should be, you know, more mindful of that angle, especially since seeing how overpowered and how he used it is. I'm surprised people don't use it as much. It does look like he's managed to, managed to find one player. He does know that the other player is in Cocktail. Let's see how they try and take this. does look like Tech is going under. While well, they try to face check deep into the pillar side. does look like they have a shield into the freezer. does look like they're trying to stall out right now. Unless they can get this impact onto the player white. does look like Pax is going to be the first one in right now. Very interested to see how the old mind takes this fight. Tech does manage to get the kill. doesn't feel like they're winning their ones across the board. Especially since they're putting themselves in these... Losing situations doesn't look like they're going to be able to try and hold deep freeze much longer. Pax gets a triple onto the player in freezer, gets this player freezer, and immediately finds the next player. Gets the down on the Tachanka. What a what a round from Pax right there. Way to pick it up, you know. Especially since he wasn't having a lot of um, impact on the rounds. Let me just get a timer out right now for 60 seconds and his. Started. Well, when one guy goes down, another uh, stands up. <laughs> That's one thing I'm noticing from 143. 
You know, I, I feel like 143 is really using the momentum to their sides. I feel like Tech shouldn't be winning half of these gunfights just because, you know, Kakros are trying to rely on the reaction speed, and especially since their reaction speed isn't as good as 143's, they should maybe have a little bit more sound strategies. So it looks like you're going to try and rotate to service, or kitchen service, to see if they can, um, you know, maybe use a little bit more diverse strategy, but it, it, 143 is reading them like a book. Most of the gunfights that they're taking, they're just walking in, face-checking most of the stuff, and they're not getting punished for it. If I were Kakros, I would say, all right, let's just try and put our players in a little bit more aggressive positions with better close-range weapons. Because I feel like they're not taking a lot of long-range weapons, and the people who are taking the long-range engagements are winning those engagements, i.e. Nate. So Nate is taking his perfect long-range engagements with Castle, taking those pixels, winning his ones across the board. I feel like Nate is trying to carry this team. Batman, on the other hand, is having a really, a really unfortunate showing today, just because you know they are immediately clearing most of the stuff. It does look like Stalic is starting to uh, walk in. I did go over the timer, uh, five seconds, and. Here we go. But I'm very interested to see how they try to game plan around this just because, you know, most Defender, of the players, um, they're not, they're not really winning their ones across the board. And I don't feel like, you know, most of the players who are playing, they, Attackers they have a lot of, str of uh, strategy built up, but you know, it's just kind of unfortunate how it's folding or, you know, coming out to play just because they're not winning their ones across the board. You need to win your ones. You need to have the aim to back up your strategy. And your strategy is... It, it's a great strategy that they're pulling out. It's just that they're not punishing, you know, 143 for the things that they should be punishing. Stalk is turning around in the middle of the site. And getting a beeper. And it's like just doing 360s. He's walking in downstairs for free. You should at least be able to identify that they're playing behind their drones. The drone work is beautiful. I do have to admit that. Especially since it's such a defender set. I'm very surprised that they're not playing as well as they should be. It does look like they are deciding to do that freezer hold. He did want to go try and rotate that, but I don't believe... Or try and reinforce that, but I don't believe he has the time anymore. They do reinforce off the garage. I'm very surprised by that. Does look like they're gonna go for a rush here, so let's just. Uh, uh, Noah's playing bakery. Poor crap. Or it's small bake. Yeah. An immediate frag coming out, and they have sight. We're free. Just crap, but they forgot to leave. So we're gonna think about, uh, about that strat. An immediate post-plant situation right now. I feel like this is just such a a bad round from them. I, I don't even know how to catch this right now just because you guys just got rushed by a blitz. And you had one person trying to hold them. You also have a Malusi who's supposed to stop the rush. And you're just not putting yourself in a good situation right now. I, I'm very surprised that they're just not able to identify what they should do. Look like a little trash talk is coming out from uh, Cat or from 143 right now, but I do feel like you know Cat Girls they're just not playing up to their fullest potential. I don't feel like they're able to identify what the problem is. I'm really interested in how they were able to get in when they had someone playing in train above with a hole. That is well. I feel like that hole might have been made a little late though. So. Uh, yeah. There's just so many problems that I've noticed that, you know, I'm just going to start rattling them off, and I don't I don't want to add to, like, I think Kakros is a great team. It's just that the problems that they have on this map are so great that I feel like if you let this map fall through the map pull, the map damn pull, you shouldn't be getting 5 0 at all. Honestly, I was expecting a different map, but in Cafe... Uh, if you if you get six out on half, I don't feel I feel like Cafe should be maybe your number one fan because I feel like there's so many other maps that you could definitely fall into that you would play a lot better, in, especially since you have a defensive half on Cafe and you're getting five out. There's just a lot of problems that happen across the board. Just look like they're trying to do a top down clear now. 
very interested to see that they don't have a lot of room presence except for Batman and the player above. Does look like they decide to make that rotate above again, but you know, I'm very interested. Uh, I'm very impressed with the way that 143 is, you know, kind of doing these rotation attack holds and saying, all right, let's do this. But look like they're going to try and conga line down to the red stairs. You know, this is going to be a great round. Immediate rush they down. They must know Echo's on his drone. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, a double from Nate, which is what they needed the most. Does look like I probably lagged out at this point right now, but um. Charge complete. Did the server crash? Nope. Oh, everybody's back, and that's a round for cat girls. Wow. Am I lagging out right now? Uh, it froze right when uh, Echo almost saved the round. Not what I would no, that was a safe round because that's a cat girl round. Oh wait. Oh <laughs> that's how bad it lagged. Yeah. Um I I but do think that might be a donation I... round right there. But um Yeah. Yes. They knew Echo was there. Alright, so I'm gonna start rattling all stuff that I feel like cat girls might not be doing as well, and they should be doing. They alright, so when you look at how 143 is from cat girls' perspective, you say, alright, they're just having someone vibe check white the entire time, anytime you play mid floor or upstairs. It does look like they have mid floor defense upstairs. I'm very interested to see how they try and counter this. Does it look like they had Batman try and vibe check onto that pallet side, but they're giving too much control off top white? I don't feel like that's something that, you know, should be your primary strategy, especially since you have the player in deep freezer. Alright, so you have the shield deep freeze. And then you proceed to reinforce the wall that he should be looking for. I'm very confused by that strategy, of course, because the only way you're gonna get a kill is if they push in the first door freezer. And get a little bit too aggressive. And even if they do do that, and I know I just said do-do, but even if they do that, you still... You're still not winning your ones across the board. You shouldn't be doing that in the first place, especially since that strategy is just has so many holes. And it's like one of the most default things for people to do is to push White Hall to take an upstairs tip because that's pretty much direct line of sight with avoiding most of the utility that they have. That's like the most default hold that you could probably do. Doesn't look like they were able to identify that, you know, oh, we should probably go downstairs. Or not downstairs, but we should probably try and play white a little bit more aggressively. See how the players playing on couches right now a little bit more aggressively? Someone playing Pixel. They're not giving they're not giving it up for free. Does it look like you're trying to walk in white? Just get C4 from below. You know, that's just something that you need to look drone for. Game plan for. I I'm, I know it it's a kind of an off preset reinforcement but that's still something that you shouldn't be dying to especially if Something you do, you do, so much do, do your, yeah you do your due diligence and say all right there might be a player under you need to look for the prone holes or see if there's anything under or any like vertical play in higher level of siege you will always say see vert play on this map in, uh, directly onto the pm I'm surprised they weren't able to identify that they were playing like that. It looked like a little bit of damage is being put onto the castle up the top by Midwest. Uh, again, one thing, downed onto Buck, unfortunately, can't resonate with that uh, other reinforcement. It doesn't look like they they have much thing to do. You know, I really like this play coming out from that. They give up Freezer for free. I'm okay with that. They reinforce off the other Freezer. They also have Cade. Cade was on the board the entire time, and they don't have Cade while Thatcher's banned. I feel like the, I feel like on top of that, most of the bands that they had were just bad. That's a bad nade coming out because it wasn't cooked properly. You held on to it for too long. Then tech just isn't able to walk up the stairs, see that you're facing that, and just kill you. They do have a little bit of more of an aggressive play coming out from Nate. Nate does his win as one. I feel like Nate is the only player on the other team that's you know managing to win his ones across the board. And they did Left in a one vx situation there. right now. I, I, I don't think uh, it's just too overwhelming for them right now, especially since they don't have the uh, ability to identify what, what the problem is. Your defensive strategies were, had massive holes in them, and the massive holes were the default takes.
like if you, the the number one thing people do on upstairs and downstairs is pressure white and you let them take white for free in kitchen the number one take is to go through prep they went through prep there was one person sitting prep all five people were prep they're not going to try and go do these uh, they don't need to do these over over exaggerated takes just because you know they're just winning across the board. You know, a bad round coming out from them again. I, I was also surprised with their operator bands and choices. You know, the Tachaka coming out. I can kind of understand the Tachaka a little bit, especially since Smoke is banned, but I don't feel like you guys were able to use the Tachaka to its fullest potential just because you're using it more of a... You're so focused on using its gadget that you weren't worried about the, the potential to kill. And I feel like... the match and Goyo as well. Yeah, and another thing that I noticed is that, you know, there are operators that are on the board that you should probably pick 100% of the time, like Kate, just because there's no Thatcher, what else is there to ban other than maybe a Cali, and no one runs Cali anymore because she got nerfed into the ground, it does look like most of them just spawned white, because look, they're going to try and rotate up white, they might try and do a top-down clear right here, very interested to see how they try and play this, but, you know, I feel like this wasn't an accurate showing of what cat girls can do. I feel like cat girls are a lot better team than this. I'm very interested to see if they can try and reverse sweep the take up here. Um, but, you know, a lot on one for upstairs. Yeah, on one for three's perspective, I feel like one for three played this very well. There's a Jaeger upstairs, but, like, that's what you kind of want to do. They do have another player top boy. I don't feel like they know that there's a cap can on the board. They're going to end up walking into cap cans, probably. By where we're betting that. Look like they managed to get the pick onto the cap can in the end. I don't think that they have identified the cap can just yet. But they might soon. A frag coming out from Stalic upstairs. He does get a little bit of damage put onto him. Tech with another kill onto Nate. Nate is their top frag. Doesn't look like it's going to be a winnable round for cat girls, Especially since they're probably going to stall out right here if I were a betting man. Does look like they decide to, you know, corner up into a room, see if they can drone out of their placement. But little does he know that very little people are there. They do have presence white. There's not a lot of need to drone, other than unless you're trying to go down red, which he is. But past that, I don't feel like they even know what site they're attacking, just because there's so much things that they have missed done or they haven't done to their best ability. Maybe. Slowing down, taking taking right behind their drones, just like they are doing right now. They're trusting the drone calls right now. It does look like he's playing vertical on this hole. Hopefully you don't walk through the hole. It does look like he's going to put a case right there, but he does get a shot through the wall. A frag coming out. Stalic getting a double, triple on the round. Slamming two of the players in a 1vx situation. What being put in a 1vx and loses the fight. GG's to everybody. A great showing from 143. I feel like if they maybe be put against more adverse players, um, I feel like they might, you know, they're, they're, they might be exposed a little bit more, but a great showing nonetheless. And, you know, cat curls, yeah. if, I, if I were cat curls, I'd look at this and, you know, VOD would be taken completely seriously. If you need any help, I'm always here. But I feel like some of the holes that you had in your defense were the most obvious holes to try and exploit. Maybe try and switch up your game plan a little bit. Maybe try and switch up, you know, most of the... Uh, maybe try and switch up some of the roles that you have some players on. I saw that they did try and switch around some of the players. Maybe put a player on mine in the next round. Maybe put them on, like, Echo. I feel like maybe if you have a little bit more stability or, you know... If, if you are able to, like, weather the storm through their bad play. Maybe trying to hide them in their strats a little bit better. But this is this is TPL, so I, I don't really expect you to be able to hide players as well anymore. But I'm very surprised that he didn't win his ones across the board. Um, you know, cat girls, they have a lot of work to do. But I also feel like this wasn't an accurate showing of what they're capable of. So... I, I'm very impressed with how 143 Esports played. I think that Cat Girls should definitely look at this game and say, you know what, we can slow it down, maybe uh, look at the VOD review, see what's wrong, and hopefully they're able to identify it. Uh, 
but there's a lot of problems that I see so far, but, you know, it's just one step at a time. I feel like they can definitely turn it around for game day two um, before the season's uh, and, you know, maybe even make a playoff push. That's, that's what you always want to try for. But, um, you know, a great game from both teams. Hopefully everybody had uh, a fun day today. Um, I am Alpha. I'm joined by Clutch. You can find me at Twitter uh, at A1PHA underscore R6. Um, past that, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's casting. Um, and uh, be safe out there. Have a good one. And